Recording in progress.
Good afternoon from the Asia Europe Foundation here in Singapore. My name is Lili Nagarajan from the ASIS Education Department, and I will be your host today. Together with my education colleagues, uh, Freya Chaupol and Quentin Fayed, I warmly welcome you to the fourth ASIF Young Leaders Summit Week on Sustainable Development in a post-COVID-19 world. We are happy that our online audience comes from over 51 Asian and European countries, and among them, we have members of the ASEM Diplomatic Corps, we have representatives of ASEM's partner organizations, and of course, our vibrant youth community and alumni. And for those uh, who wish uh, to, to have note-taking services, these are available. Please follow the link, which is provided in the chat. The ASEM Young Leaders Summit is, as you know, the official youth event of the 13th ASEM Summit which is hosted by the government of Cambodia this week. And together with our Cambodian and international partner organizations, we have prepared a diverse program which demonstrates the role young people play in leading sustainable development and in contributing to bi-regional cooperation within the Asia-Europe meeting process. This uh, Young Leader Summit program will last for one week. Uh, we are happy that you join us today for the opening. We have welcome and keynote speeches and a brief presentation how this youth summit created sustainable impact on a local community level. And following this opening ceremony today, we then look forward to seeing you for the rest of the week. Every day we have prepared thematic sessions on the SDGs and we will also launch the ASM Youth Report on Leadership this Thursday. At the end of this week, representatives of the fourth ACF Young Day Summit will have the opportunity to deliver an ASEM youth intervention at the opening ceremony of the ASEM Summit. So let's begin an eventful week, and I'm delighted to introduce you to my executive director, Ambassador Toru Morikawa from the Asia Europe Foundation. He will deliver the welcome remarks. Ambassador Morikawa is a seasoned career diplomat. He has been seconded by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan to ASAF, and uh, his previous posting included Iran and France. At uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, he focused on media and regional economic cooperation. Ambassador Morikawa, the floor is yours, please. Thank you, Yanni. Your Excellency, Kumani, President of the Asia Youth Council and President of the Union of Youth Federations of Cambodia. Your Excellency, also again, Secretary of State of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of Cambodia. Ace of Young Leaders Summit Four participants. Dear partners, ladies and gentlemen, a 10 month long leadership journey for you across Asia and Europe is coming to a grand finale. In February this year, we started the fourth Ace of Young Leaders Summit. Sustainable development in a post COVID 19 world as the official youth event in the lead up of the 13th ASEM Summit hosted by the Royal Government of Cambodia. Today's session inaugurates the final part of the Other Violence Four program. On behalf of Asia Youth Foundation, I warmly welcome all of you. ASF Wireless for closing and summit series. At this occasion, I'd like to thank all partner organizations and supporters for their trust and close cooperation. With you, we made this unique project possible. I'd like to express my deepest gratitude to our partner organization from the Royal Kingdom of Cambodia. First and foremost, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation as a leading partner who is represented today by His Excellency Dr. Gannett. The Ministry of Education 
use and sold. The Ministry of Commerce and the Ministry of Tourism and Weather, the Union of Youth Federations of Cambodia, who is represented today by our keynote speaker, His Excellency Bruce Bay. We are also thankful to our international partners including ASEF's long-term higher education partner organization. The Palace of Europe in Napoli, as well as the Center for Creative Leadership. Our high appreciation also goes to the Union, European Union for co-financing this youth project. At the location of 900 million young people, they 51 ASEAN countries. We, as ASEAN, attach a paramount importance to the young generation as they are those who will shape the common future of Asia and Europe in an increasingly fragmented and pluralized world. Leadership is a key which endeavor to achieve a sustainable development goal. The ASEC Wireless Four serves as an invitation to young people to reflect on self-leadership, team leadership, and societal leadership in this context, and to demonstrate these three leadership fundamentals to the best of their ability. And we, they say, are dedicated to providing with the ASEC Wireless Four a sustainable platform that will channel the users' voices to political leaders and pave the way for their presence in political decision making process. During the ASEC Wireless Four, over 180 leaders. 51 Asian and European countries navigated through a rich program which included an intensive knowledge building space with webinars, intercultural online collaboration and communication campaign, the virtual youth dialogue with Asian partner leaders to whom we reiterate our deepest gratitude, a leadership in action process whereas the participants jointly develop activities to contribute towards the achievement of sustainable development goals. I'd like to commend our youth leader participants for demonstrating their resilience and endurance on the way to this other wireless for our team. For our youth representatives, this meant over the past 10 months has managed time and technology challenges, overcome um, culture and communication differences, balance academic and professional life with volunteering activities, find ways of bonding in an online scenario, and remain committed despite digital mental exhaustion. Many of us now during the past years of the conference. This week, we will witness the outcome of our other wireless hope participants' joint journey, their lessons learned, and the concrete contribution to the achievement of sustainable development goals. First, our participants will present the results and impact of their leadership in action activities, which they jointly developed and conducted in local communities across ASEAN and virtual space. Three other parents or youth leaders will participate in the opening ceremony of ASEAN 13 Summit and present an ASEAN Youth Declaration. Development in a post COVID 19 world. 
to the leader of city street back we launched the HSP report on leadership. Over 13,000 young people across Asia and Europe contributed to its development by sharing their experiences of leadership role and opportunities and barriers of youth leadership in their countries. While the entire program has to be held online, Due to the current pandemic, we believe in the young participants, in their power of commitment and determination, and in the value of relationship and network. They will play a catalytic role in their respective communities, ultimately leading to multiplier effects for larger impact in Asia and Europe. I wish you an inspiring weekend. Thanks so much for it. Thank you so much, Ambassador Morikawa, for emphasizing the youth's role in the ASIM process and how ASIF tries to strengthen it and the importance also ASIF attaches uh, to, to young people for a vibrant Asia and Europe future. Today's uh, keynote speaker comes from Cambodia, and I'm pleased to introduce His Excellency Hun Mani, who is the president of the Asian Youth Council and the president of the Union of Youth Federations of Cambodia. Your Excellency, you are also a member of the National Assembly, a member of the Commission on Foreign Affairs, International Cooperation, Information and Media, and you are the chairman of the Commission on Education, Youth, Religious Affairs, Culture and Tourism of the National Assembly of the Kingdom of Cambodia. It is wonderful to see how you have been engaged in uh, social community and youth work over the past decades. You have been leading the uh, Youth Federation since 2012 and has also, you have also received several international awards, including the ASEAN People's Award, the Guzi Peace Prize for your work on youth leadership, humanitarianism, and your advocacy for cultural heritage and the Padma Shri Prize from the President of India. It's wonderful to have you with us today. I hand over the floor to you, Your Excellency. Thank you very much for having me. Excellency Sosokin, Secretary of State, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of the Kingdom of Cambodia, and head of the Inter-Institutional Institutional Working Group responsible for organization of the Fourth ASEF Young Leaders Summit, Excellencies, Excellency Ambassador to Morikawa, Executive Director of the Asia Europe Foundation, Navigators and Young Leaders across Asia and Europe, National and International Distinguished Guests. On behalf of the Union of Youth Federation of Cambodia, as well as the Asian Youth Council, I would like to extend my sincere pleasure to join with your excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and all participating young leaders and youth across Asia and Europe in the fourth ASEP Young Leaders Summit virtually hosted by the Kingdom of Cambodia under the theme Sustainable Development in a Post-COVID-19 World. I would like to take this opportunity to extend my appreciation and applause to the organizing team of the fourth ASEF Young Leaders Summit headed, headed by Excellency Sopsokin, in close collaboration with the Asia Europe Foundation and all relevant stakeholders for all the hard work and achievements so far. Your commitment, dedication, and utmost efforts in organizing the fourth uh, fifth, five days ASEF Young Leaders Summit possible especially for the success of the tree planting ceremony on the 18th of November, 2021 in Siem Reap, Kingdom of Cambodia, in which the 53 trees planted last week by our youth and young leaders and diplomats from Asia and Europe countries reflect the strong bond of the friendship and cooperation in terms of youth to youth 
as well as people-to-people -people relation between Asia and Europe. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the fourth ASEF Young Leaders Summit virtually hosted today by the Kingdom of Cambodia is a part of the ASEF 13 Summit, so symbolize the strengthening of bonds and friendship as well as collaboration between our youth in both regions to preserve and push forward the sustainable development agenda. In this regard, sustainable development in a post-COVID-19 world is a timely topic and particularly significant in this summit that gathers young leaders from our two regions to learn and understand in depth our common challenge whether it is in the sphere of geopolitical security, such as the dynamics of traditional and non-traditional security, economic and trade, social cultural, including people-to-people -people exchange, along with other global and regional issues, which correlate both directly and indirectly to sustainable development of our two regions. This Young Leaders Summit will allow participants to discuss ways forward, so to offer and be part of the solution, especially through multilateral platforms to address our combined global and regional challenges, especially the ones that brought about due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Allow me to reiterate the words my Sundai Akya Maha Senapade Dichu Hun Sain, Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Cambodia during the opening ceremony of the Bao Forum of Asia, that no nation is safe until all nations are safe. I would like to stress that sustainable development in a post-COVID-19 world would only remain as a dream if our fight against COVID-19 cannot be achieved or come to an end. In this connection, I would like to take the opportunity to express my most profound appreciation to the Royal Government of Cambodia and governments around the world, especially medical personnel, authorities, and volunteers for their sacrifice to contain and curtail the spread of the COVID-19. For Cambodia in particular, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the Royal Government of Cambodia for the successful vaccination campaign and create herd immunity against COVID-19, leading to the official reopening of the country on the 1st of November, 2021. This timely reopening allows, also opens once again the opportunities for Cambodian youth, either through individual capacity or with the Union of Youth Federation of Cambodia and the Asian Youth Council to connect and continue their active engagement with our international friends and partners through various regional and global platform, those of which include the ASEM craft process such as today's summit. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, although the fight against COVID-19 is far from over, the fact that the fourth ASEF Young Leaders Summit today still goes on, shows that COVID-19 can only temporarily be an obstacle, but it cannot stop our will to unite and come together as youth of both regions to discuss on the topic, on the topic of sustainable development in post-COVID-19 world. In this regard, we come together today as young leaders of Asia and Europe, and as a global citizen, who are full of commitment, proactive, and positive mindset to contribute to the development of society in both Asia and Europe, to discuss what really matters and what we can do together to address them. By being part of the Young Leaders Summit, participants from Asia and Europe have the opportunity to not only engage in peer-to-peer -peer learning process, but also take in knowledge and capacity building in focus areas, which are undoubtedly relevant in today's context when we are still confronting with the challenges from the pandemic. 
the participant will also have the opportunity to express a combined commitment, constructive inputs, and be part of the solution through the ASAP declaration to the SM leaders. The gathering today symbolizes our commitment toward regional and global solidarity despite the turbulent world caused by the COVID-19 and will undoubtedly give opportunity to the young leaders of our two regions to further the discussion on the shared vision for a sustainable future for all, especially in the post-COVID-19 world. As the as a future leaders of our respective country, we reaffirm the commitment that bears by our leaders to foster the values of multi multilateralism and shared growth that aims at achieving the sustainable development for the people of our two regions, especially in a post-COVID-19 world. To conclude, I would, like, I would like to thank the main organizer, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of the Kingdom of Cambodia, represented and headed by Excellency Soksoke, the Asia Foundation, the Asia Europe Foundation, headed by Excellency Ambassador to Morikawa, and all relevant stakeholders for their commitment to the primary objective of effective implementation of the fourth asset Young Leaders Summit in order to promote better mutual understanding between Asia and Europe through greater intellectual, cultural, and people-to-people -people exchange in line with the vision of the Asia-Europe cooperation. I extend my sincere appreciation to Excellencies, national and international distinguished guests, and all of you delegates for joining virtually today. Your presence today serves as a strong symbol, especially to our ASEM leaders, that we reaffirm our shared commitment to promoting multilateralism, shared growth, and solidarity between the people of, between the people of the two regions. I wish the summit between young leaders from Asia and Europe a great success and fruitful outcome. And with excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and all participating youth, a noble success in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you so much, His Excellency Hunmani, for these encouraging remarks. It was very good to hear from you a positive outlook, a positive outlook on multilateralism, a positive outlook on sustainable development. And as you have rightly pointed out, our topic of the Young Leaders Summit, sustainable development in a post-COVID-19 world, it is linked to so many different sectors. You mentioned the geopolitics, economic growth, uh, social, cultural affairs, and so on. And this is what we have truly experienced also over the last uh, months, how interconnected um, the SDGs which uh, we have been working on are uh, for these joint um, developments. Thank you so much again. Well, we are now moving uh, to the third part of our opening ceremony. And as you know, most of the program elements of the fourth ACF Young Leaders Summit, they had to be transformed, unfortunately, to virtual events. However, uh, we are glad that several activities could still take place on site and we still engaged people on the ground with hands-on actions. And uh, our most prominent example took place last week, uh, which demonstrates how the Youth Summit left a positive, sustainable, and in this case, a green impact in local communities in Assam. Our example comes from Cambodia. So I warmly invite you to take a look at this activity and video presentation. It was prepared by our partner organization, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of Cambodia. This video is not only about this ACE of wireless activity on the ground, it also gives you an impression on Cambodia, the ACE of summit uh, and uh, its framework. And then at the end, you will see the ACE of wireless special activity, which was led by our local partner organizations. Thank you so much.
The spirit of generosity defines the Cambodian people. As best we can, we support and share our resources with the rest of the world, both now as we battle COVID-19 and for the long road ahead. <laughs> Cambodia proudly assumes the chairmanship of the 13th Asia-Europe Meeting Summit, also known as ASEM-13, on the 25th and 26th of November 2021, under the theme, Strengthening Multilateralism for Shared Growth. To give prominence to the role of youth in the ASEM process, Cambodia and the Asia Europe Foundation co-organized the fourth edition of the ASEF Young Leaders Summit as the official youth event in support of ASEM 13. <music> 150 youth leaders have been selected for a 10-month-long leadership program that features world-class training, peer-to-peer -peer exchanges, and hands-on collaboration on four sustainable development goals culminating in this week's Youth Summit, taking place virtually and in Cambodia. Cambodia, particularly the Cambodian youth, have deep-rooted reasons to persevere in our commitment to promote peace and development in our country. The history of modern Cambodia is considered to have begun nearly 70 years ago in 1953 when our King Father Norodom Sihanouk won our country's independence. Unfortunately, peace was short-lived and sporadic. Following a coup d'etat against a democratic government in 1970, the country was plunged into a period of protracted civil wars lasting nearly three decades. Countless sacrifices, tireless efforts, and unparalleled dedication came from our pioneering generation. The efforts to unify the country led to the landmark signing of the 1991 Paris Peace Accord. Throughout these efforts, the energy and drive of young people have always been a key factor. Peace in Cambodia, like everywhere else, was hard won. It was only through the application of the win-win strategy by some Naik Aket Moha Senapade Lechul Hun Sen, Prime Minister of Cambodia, that total peace and national reconciliation were achieved in the kingdom in late 1998. These lessons inform Cambodia's decisions and actions now and in the future. It is a fact never to be taken for granted that Cambodia is now a sovereign nation on a firm path of strong economic growth and social progress. In 1925, Cambodia made the bold move of designating a protected area for its natural resources, becoming the first country in Southeast Asia to do so. Thanks to uninterrupted peace and development, our protected areas have more than doubled to the equivalent of well over 40% of the kingdom's land area. Resource limitation has not deterred Cambodia from setting ambitious targets under the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. Cambodia has committed to reducing our greenhouse gas emission by approximately 42% by 2030. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused setbacks in every country around the world. 
now, as Cambodia is set to be amongst the first countries to reopen their economies, special attention is being given to its tourism sector, an essential lifeline for the Cambodian population. The Kingdom of Wonder is a special destination. It is a conversion point for a multiplicity of attractions, ranging from breathtaking cultural heritage to pristine ecotourism sites, to our world-acclaimed most beautiful bays, to the warm hospitality of our people. As we undertake this monumental task of recovery, we are ensuring that youths constitute both our core enablers and benefactors in all our efforts. In the tourism sector, there is a crucial role for the ASIN process and for our young leaders to make invaluable contributions. Indeed, efforts in the four chosen SDGs concerning well-being, education, economic growth, and climate action can significantly manifest themselves in the recovery of the tourism sector. On the 18th of November 2021, at the World Heritage Site of Angkor Wat, more than 200 people, consisting of youth leaders, government representatives, and members of the ASEM Diplomatic Corps, gathered for the ASEF Wireless for Forest Ceremony. An initiative stemming from the drive, passion, and collaborative efforts of our Asia-Europe youth leaders. The event bears significance in many regards, driving awareness and momentum for actions under all four chosen SDGs and serving as one of the first physical public events in Cambodia in the post-COVID-19 era. This inspiring and symbolic gathering showcases long-term solidarity between Asia and Europe and most importantly, it signifies what our young people are able to accomplish together for the betterment of our world. Cambodia and our youth stand firmly committed to working with our Asia-Europe counterparts in order to achieve our shared objectives of strengthening cooperation, trust and tolerance, multilateralism and shared growth. Over the course of the ASEF Wireless 4 program, our youth leaders have achieved many great things. We in Cambodia are excited to witness even more contribution and more achievements coming from you, our young people, the shapers of our common future. Cambodia welcomes you to the fourth ASEF Young Leaders Summit. Let us unlearn, learn, and relearn together. Thank you so much. I hope uh, you enjoyed the presentation. It was done by our dear colleagues and partners from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, in, in Cambodia. And uh, as you can see, with uh, 53 trees, uh, one for each ASEAN country, the European Union and the ASEAN Secretariat, I think we can say that this ASEAN Wireless Youth Forest in Angkor Wat will surely help us to create long-lasting memories uh, of this Young Leader Summit and also support our efforts in contributing to sustainable development. So again, very grateful to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, as well as the Union of Youth Federations of Cambodia and other local partners for realizing this wonderful activity. With this, uh, we concluded the opening ceremony of the fourth ASEF Young Leader Summit, at least the public and official part of it. We look forward to welcoming our online audience again over the next days for the thematic sessions. Tomorrow is our first session on SDG 3, good health uh, and well-being. So all the sessions will be live streamed. Uh, we will share the links on each day on social media. And it would be really lovely to have you with us uh, and see what our uh, ASF youth representatives have uh, worked on over the past six months. And while our Acevales for youth representatives will continue after this official opening with a consultation, consultation session on the ASM Youth Declaration. 
We wish you here from ASAP and together with our partners a good start to the week. And yeah, we look forward to seeing you during the next days. Thank you very much for joining us today. A goodbye from ASAF.